Yep, yeah, recording started. All right, mate. Here we are. This is our podcast. <laughs> <laughs> they don't want to be locked into a, a house or an apartment or some space. Got to follow the social distancing rule. More social distancing keeps more people healthy. It's like, oh, you guys are good at talking shit. Why don't you just do a podcast? As soon as you try to do a podcast, we sound like a bunch of muppets. Hi, boys. Hey, mate. <laughs> <laughs> What's That's happening? Internet. I think it's shit. Yeah. That sounds all right, mate. I've already cast my line. Look, I've already, I've already got my first catch. Who's that in the, the background? Looks like a bank robber. Oh, oh look at no! That. Hey, you can't bring Have a look the at podcast. him. <laughs> hey, hey, keep one and a half meters. It's the man. Yeah, I cast yeah. my line down at breakfast this morning in the old podcast fishing and. Pulled up a bluefin tuna. Yeah, you've done well. I'll tell you what, I'm well sick of seeing him. I've been pissing <laughs> around with him all week. And he's the last person I wanted to see this morning. I mean, I've just gotten over him. And you brought him on yeah. the potty. It's a real slap in the face, actually. How's the return to racing been, boys? Obviously, it's uh, off to a pretty edgy start, George. Yeah, man, it was... Uh, it was... It was Basically, like after about 30 seconds, I was like, oh, this is exactly how I remember it. Hadn't left and it was all good and romantic and, you know, you're back and whatever. And then after like 100K, I had this like reality check moment as I was like sliding along the ground, looking up, seeing like half my team on top of me, Yatesy, everybody just on the ground. I went, oh, shit, this is actually, this is the bit I forgot about. Like this is... You know, you're training all the time. You remember, like, climbing mountains and the pallet, swapping your bottles around, all this shit. And then as soon as you go down, you're like, ah, oh, fuck. It's actually, like, it's actually shit. Um, so that was, a, that was a snapback to reality. But then, yeah, all good from there, essentially. What about you, Bills? You, had a, um, you probably had a ruder introduction than me. Yeah, mate. I started in Strata. Um, it was 43 degrees. Dusty as shit. Dangerous as fuck. Um, so, yeah, it was a horrible, horrible well, introduction. What was, the, what was the new protocols like? Did they keep the fans one and a half metres away from you and all that shit? Oh, yeah, there was no fans. It was actually a real sh- – well, not a shame because it's good that we're back racing. But, like, there's, like, in, in Strata Bianchi, when you finish up that the, – up into the um, Piazza there, it's, like, normally, like, chocker, chocker block, like, fans over the barriers, like – and it's a steep climb, like 500 meters, and you're normally just trying to ride through this little narrow corridor of people, and like it was just deserted. There was no one there, so it was real bizarre. Um, but it was bloody good to be back racing. And I tell you what, Strata Bianchi in the summer is something different, something different. But then did I did you make it by... to the Piazza Bills? Nah, I was watching it on TV. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, that must have been weird. Yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah that must have been yeah. tough yeah. viewing from the couch there, Bills. Shit, the aircon, <laughs> the aircon was, the aircon was nice. Um, but then I, I raced again on um, two days ago, further north in Tuscany and Lombardy. Chitico Lombarda. Lombarda. Lombardo. And it fucking pissed down. It was like riding through a waterfall, mate. It was like 18 degrees, pissing rain. Uh, so we, I've had an introduction of um, two different levels of um, shit, to be fair. Hey, guys, i got Chavez here. He's got to go and sort his life out of minute. Should we, should we talk to him for a little bit? Like, I, yeah, yeah let's, get, let's talk to Chavez. i got a lot of bones to pick with him. This is All a right. podcast podcast fishing. So have you guys cast your lines yet? I cast my line real easily. What I did is I walked down to breakfast and I just threw a net over the table and I just <laughs> pulled it in and see see what uh what I pulled into the net. This is probably the one opportunity to finally get Daryl Olympian and after the years of promising the fans Daryl yeah. Olympian he's sitting at the breakfast table when you come back with Esteban Chavez. Well, the best thing was Imps was there. I didn't even ask him. I just asked Chavez. <laughs> no, I don't blame you. I'm off Imps. I think you gave <laughs> yeah, him no, a nothing. good chance. I'm off him. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Well, I'll go to Mike and Cheech, ask him a question. All right. Hey, uh, Cheech, you looking lean, bro. What's What's been your secret to um, losing all this weight during lockdown? 
that is easy because in Colombia you can still go into the to the doctor. So I did the surgery liposuction. <laughs> 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 so it's easier. I I don't need push nothing in the bag, no diet, just liposuction. And look yeah. at me. Easy peasy. How much Cheech? Yep. Uh, oh, I was gonna say Cheech, we had a um we had a real ding dong battle on what day was it? Uh when, Wednesday or day day three, August. We've just come back. Yeah. And um what do you think? I was watching you, you were watching me, and we both uh we both didn't watch the right guy. What do you <laughs> This little teenager. I, I I just I just attack and I pull in. I see is you and and Remco, and I just say, okay, the guy here for Luke is George. He he looks really lean and he's a really good climber. Remco is pretty young and this climb is too hard for him. It's a big mistake. <laughs> yeah, me too. I made the same mistake. You attacked full. You you rode. You were the strongest guy in the race, and you you attacked like fifteen times. So I said, okay, if he's that strong, I'm only going to follow you. And then when when the other guy went, I went, ah, Cheech will get him. And then I saw your face <laughs> with one k to go, and I said, ah, maybe he's not going to get him. <laughs> I got a bite to pick with you, George. I watched that stage on TV, and uh, I mean, obviously you guys are on competing teams, but you well sucked, Chavez. All the way up that oh. climb, you didn't, you didn't even give him a pull. I saw the I saw the elbow come out, and you were just like, "Nah, I'm fucked. I can't pull. I can't pull." And then you just jumped him. K to go. What a wanker! Yeah, that's that's classic G Bennett. That's how I operate. That's my mate, basic mo. Just never, ever, ever, ever pull a turn on the front. Hey, I got a question for <laughs> I got a question for Chavez. Um, on the bike, is George Bennett a legend or a bellend? Bellend. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's universal, Jonesy. Because he put a lot of pressure in his teammates. They are pretty young in Burgos, for example. And I don't know what George says to them. And they are like not, <laughs> and they don't want to lose George alone and just fighting for the position. He's like, come on, George, it's the first race. They're my, like, my, my boys. I don't say anything to them. They just know where to be. They're just <laughs> young and motivated. And they, they stick on my wheel like shit to a blanket. Okay, now it's unbelievable. And, and George, George, don't say hello to you. It's like focus on the race. It's like, yeah. I'm the friend. Like, come on. We, sometimes yeah, we're we drunk talk. together. You know, like, come on. Yeah. I it know just sounds friend. like an asshole. Exactly, exactly. It's like, fuck, man. He's playing you, the game. George, George, do you get white line fever, mate? What is, what's your I'll, issue? Um, I, I got white line fever on the last day. I couldn't get near it. That was my. <laughs> I had re reverse white line fever on. As soon as I got near that line, I just put the brakes on. <laughs> uh, so how are you feeling about uh, the rest of the season, Chavez? You've seen a uh, few of the uh, what what a few of the hitters have got to offer um, after the COVID break. Are you are you confident going into the rest of the year, mate? Yeah, it's a really nice start like this. I'm here now with. With my builds, with my men in in Poland, hopefully we, we will do a really good one, and I I'm really excited for going for the Tour de France for my for my second time and have my revenge there and you know John see the dreams come true and it's nothing impossible in life. Well, mate, you're looking bloody sharp, and if you're getting under George Bennett's skin, you're halfway there, mate. That's that's a good. Yeah, he's sign. done a good job of that, eh? <laughs> I'll see you. In, hey, I'll see hey, you. Jonesy, uh, I was thinking. In, oh, before we yeah. say bye to Esteban, oh, no. I just wanted to know we'll see him next week in in, uh, in Italy, right? Lombardy? No. I no. just go to Andorra and go in for my second liposuction session. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you down at the clinic in Andorra. <laughs> <laughs> what were you going to say, Bills? Uh, I was going to say when we're just talking about nothing's impossible. Um, I was remembered from your podcast with Miller when you asked when you asked Dave, oh, can you leave the leave the listeners with like one last part of wisdom? And he told that real like heartwarming story about how his grandma told him when he was a little kid sitting on a park bench that, you know, Dave, nothing nothing's impossible in life. You know, you can you can do what you want. And then he's like he's taken that throughout his whole life. And and then his son, um, said something about, oh, it's impossible, Dad. And then he sat him down on his bed and had this real heart, 
heartwarming moment, father to son, like, son, you know, nothing's impossible, nothing's impossible. And then in the end, he's like, I mean, of course, some things are impossible. Didn't his kid, he, he was asking about, like, I want to go to the moon one day. And he <laughs> said, like, you know, other kids are laughing at me. He said, no, 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 it's, you can do it. And I said, well, if the sky's the limit, you know, why are there footsteps on the moon? Yeah, yeah. that's right. That's right. right. Mm. All right, Chief, we'll let you go get ready, eh? Thank you yeah. Much. I will pin the number. We're sprinting. It was a sprint stage today in Poland, so yeah. we'll probably go for Chavez. Hey, so we, do you know if the wean dog's racing in Poland? No, he's not. He's in Italy. I raced with him in Italy two days ago, and he's still there racing the rest of the Italian races. Oh, because he, he's my fish. I've gone back in the same pond. Um, we spoke about he, it. He told me to give him heads up and I forgot. So I just sent him a message and, yeah, I don't think he's on WhatsApp. So I think the, the chances of hooking the, this Loch Ness are slim to fuck all. Yeah. Oh, well, we'll get there. Yeah. All right. Oh, well. Say goodbye to Cheech. See you guys. See you, Cheech. Thank you very much. And I want to do it next time as well. Good Make stuff, Pacos. Peace out. Thanks, hey, bro. I need... Hey, can you send me before you go? Can you send me one of those face masks, the one, the Chavez ones? Because uh, in Melbourne, we have to all wear masks, and we're in the middle of a second wave, mate. It'd come in pretty handy at this point. Yeah, we'll send, we'll send. No worries. All right, good Stop, stuff, mate. Bro. Peace, yeah. mate. Good luck. Uh, See you, Cheech. See you on the bus, so mate. So, Lock Melbourne second wave. I think it's oh, the mate, wave, isn't it? T- you today, were the they came in on the on the princess, diamond princess, and they've come back. Today was the worst day since the pandemic started. 750 new cases, 15 deaths, uh, one bloke in his 30s. Um, they've started the hard lockdown where they've got a curfew now. So it's a bit like when it started in Spain, Bules. Um, You can't yeah. be out of your house from 8 till 5. One person can go to do the shopping um, for one hour. And, yeah, uh, yeah they're, they're not seeing it drop off obviously because, you know, they've only had this hard lockdown for three or four days, but far out. It'd wanna, they'd want to start seeing some results soon because businesses are obviously going down the gurgler and um, it's just a bit of a stressful uh, vibe here at the moment. It's interesting, though, watching how, um, at least hearing how Aussies have responded compared to, like, so what, basically what you're going through now is what we had to do, you know, in March or whatever it was. But like over here, we didn't get the the anti mask dickheads. Like they are the, like they're potentially the worst people in the world. The anti maskers, or like the the it's our right to um, not. You know, we don't have to lock down. It's it's, it's a, a breach of our rights. Like fuck you, it's not. Just yeah. lock down. Particularly like when it's life, it, it's life and death now. There's no fucking around. Like people no, are it's dying. not about like rights. There's no there's no there's no time to be like oh. For, you know, we can like it's our right to not wear a mask, and it's just don't be a dick. Wear a mask. You're like it's going to save people. You can tell like every day that the premier Dan Andrews is having to f- do a press conference and give an update, and he's starting to look really cooked and tired. And then he got the police chief up yesterday, and uh, you can tell they're getting quite pissed off. Is when they use examples, like they give you stories of what's going on. And one of them was yesterday, a cop said to a 38 year old woman in Frankston. Hey, you know, where's your mask? You need to put a mask on. And she reacted by grabbing the cop, punching the shit out of it, and smashing her head against a fucking brick wall. Like, the throw fuck? the book. Throw the book. She at sounds her. like a meth head, though. I'm surely she's a meth head. Well, yes, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, no it's, it's, it's good chance. It's like, <laughs> good chance. Uh, did yeah, you see in, um, that flight from um, Amsterdam to Ibiza? They had a couple of Brits on there, and they refused to wear masks. These, you know, those the typical. Brick that goes to Ibiza in July. The person that voted for Brexit, for sure. Yeah, I mean, Same I, I don't want to Brexit. I don't want to stereotype, but it's that those fuckwit Brits that go to Ibiza in July, and oh, yeah. um, they refused to wear a mask and they were drunk, and um, and in the end, <laughs> the passengers just beat the shit out of them. <laughs> and then just, really? Yeah, they just punched them out and then just took them to ground and just basically put them in a chokehold on the on the aisle floor, and then the they obviously carry handcuffs on the planes and they just cuff them and. Buck, buckled them in and straight jacketed them in and dealt with them on the ground. So they'll be having a shit time. You see, the, you see the other out. flight got turned around because people refused to, t- uh, the, the air, whatever the American Airlines flight got turned around because people refused to put, mar- they had a couple of anti-masks on and they just wouldn't put it on. They said, oh, stuff you, turn the plane around. 
and they tell how everybody has to turn around, go back to base. Well, you, 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 haven't been on a, you haven't been on a plane yet, have you, George? You've been driving to nah. all the race. So I've been on a yep. couple now. I flew to, um, I obviously flew from Barcelona to Milan, which is two epicenters of the virus um, at its peak. Yeah, that's running the gauntlet, eh? In a big way, that's running the gauntlet. Like, there's and no then, one on that flight that's fully unexposed. Mate, it's, yeah. but the, the protocols are really strict. The airlines are doing quite well over here. Um, they had the middle seats, all the middle seats blocked out. Um, so, yeah, there was like only, you know, half a meter between people instead of... Yeah, what what worries me though, was that Ryanair or was that... No, nah, nah. I was going to say, uh, if it's Ryanair, I wouldn't be backing them to spend the extra cash on cleanliness. Nah, they want well, to I charge should... people two euro a piss. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, they, they, we had to fill in, so we had to fill in forms on the plane. Obviously, you weren't allowed on the plane without a mask. Um, you weren't allowed to take the mask off on the plane, even though they were serving peanuts. Don't know how that works. Um, and yeah, you had to fill in, fill in forms about where you'd be and what you were doing, rah, rah, rah. And then when you got off the plane, or even when you entered the terminal, they had those thermo checks. So you could only enter the terminal oh, yeah. with a boarding pass. So there's only people with who are traveling allowed inside the airport itself. And there's plenty going on. But, mate, it was desolate. In Barcelona Airport, you know, both of you guys know what Barcelona Airport's like in July. It's fucking mm. shocker, you know. Mm. Mate, it was – there would have been a handful of people there. Were all the shops the, open and stuff? Like, could uh, you go sit out and – um, Really? Starbucks was open though, so they're. What about that? Ma- what about that? Macca's. Macca's no. is gone, mate. It's BK now, but that was open. Yeah. All the American chains are open. They're obviously under Trump's orders, um, but all the European stuff is closed. Yeah. Hey, we're just we obviously we have to wear masks now. I'm just getting used to the whole process of like going for a walk and that. And geez, you got to be on top of your dental hygiene, don't you? Because with that mask, you're just full on breathing in the breath. Well, I, I'm, this just, look, team masks, I'm look. this concerned. Why oh, is that? Nice. Well, because before, I, if I, you know, for example, you go get a haircut and you've just smashed some PB on toast, you don't want to go there and you don't want to, you know, you don't want to just smell like peanut butter or something, but you've got a mask on. I mean, I don't mind smelling peanut butter no, or whatever. No, the problem is you can smell it. Like, I can smell yeah, my breath. Yeah, but only you can smell it. It's not that other people can smell your breath anymore. You don't, you know, something you take yeah, no, What, I'm, what I'm saying is, is some mornings, even my own smell gives me the irrits. Oh, you know, okay. like, well, you need that's. I mean, regardless of mask on or mask off, that's the problem. you need to work on your dental hygiene. <laughs> yeah, that's what that's my point. I don't, think, I don't think that's a mask issue. I think that's a dental hygiene issue. When you wear these surgical masks, like the condensation in there is unbelievable, eh? Have like, you yeah. found a way around glasses and mask yet? Like, have you found the the solution to yes, that? Because that's yes. something I still haven't worked out. You pull the glass out a little bit further. Don't press it right up against your face. Oh, oh I've, I've it, been pulling it, the mask. I've been pulling the mask out a bit. No, no. Pull your, pull your I'm wearing the mask on my chin. <laughs> I pull the mask down a bit below the nose. <laughs> Tell her why uh, you get crook. Yeah. Hey, speaking of COVID, me, oh, have... you got break. You got breaking news, Bill. Oh yes. Hang on. Yeah. How did we not talk about this at the top of the show? This is the biggest news of the year. Do you want to break it, Jonesy? Oh well, no. I think you. I think you should. On the topic okay. of COVID and uh, crook units. So you guys will remember a, about a, a month ago we were we were waiting in the in the ranks for Jonesy's test results on whether he had COVID or not. He was man down that episode. He gave us nothing except uh, sniffles that episode, and we thought, "Oh shit, Jonesy's got COVID." And we waited his test results, and they were negative, which was bloody terrible news for the show. But then I had my serological test done, uh, which is the the blood test for um, the antibodies, about two weeks ago. Jules had COVID. I had it. You had COVID. I had COVID. So I remember the day you had it because we were on Skype. We were, I was calling you, you were like, oh man, I feel shit. I got to go. I was like, where are you, you going to go? You're, you're at home by yourself. He's stuck in there. Like, yeah, I just can't handle it. And I was like, well, maybe I've got it. Maybe I don't. And then nothing really happened. You just felt like rooted, right? You couldn't, couldn't really move. You didn't have a fever or anything. And you were kind of just like agitated. And then the next day I texted you, I was like, oh, you're good. And you're like, yeah, but better. Not great. And then two days later, you were sweet. So now that I've mentioned yeah. this, I wonder if there's like privacy rules around this in the team and I'm not supposed to tell anybody. Oh, well. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> have you seen that the, the France had the Jure riders that had it? They they walked away with an immunity passport. So does this mean you don't have yeah. to get, uh, you don't have to get every time a, 
PCR test up your nose. Yeah, but I well, think they don't they don't know enough about it yet, do they? Mm. No, I, so that's I, what that's, concerns that's, me a little bit about these these AG2 um, Fonte de Jure riders that are now charging around without getting the tests because what if they, you know, you can get a different strain or something? Yeah, well, let, let's con- let's, let me quickly touch on my... Um, so what happened was I have the antibodies. I was positive for the antibodies. So what that means is that I was exposed to the virus at some point over the past <clears throat> 33 years, um, more likely in the, la- in the last few months, though. And um, so, yeah, I, I don't have COVID, but I have been exposed to it. I've had uh, four PCR tests before going to these races, all, all which were negative. Um, and, yeah, you are right, George. They do have that immunity passport for, um, for some people, but our team, it's not gonna, we're not going to do that, um, which I 100% agree with. Uh, I prefer to, can, to stick with the protocol of having these PCR tests before going every race because... I mean, I, I I would feel fucking terrible walking into a bubble, um, and we this is what we are. We are in a bubble of of um, COVID free bike riders and teams and things like that. So I'm not going to um, be the guy that walks in going, ah, I didn't have the test because I got the antibodies. No, no, I'd rather have that negative test next to my name as well. So I'll continue as normal with that um, and flick that immunity passport. Mm. Hey, protocols and bubbles and things. Have you been doing this daily? I actually, this just reminded me that I have to do this every morning. Um, is the Corona questionnaire. So if you're heading to a race, so I'm on my way to a race in an hour and I haven't done my Corona questionnaire. So maybe we could do this together. Um, this is something we have to do every day, Jonesy. Yo. Um, so these are the seven questions we get asked. Do you have an increased temperature? So no. Do you have a minor cough? No. Do you have shortness of breath? No. Do you have a mild sore throat? No. Do you have a sinus, snotty or runny nose? No. Do you have a loss of taste and smell? No. Do you have an unusual headache? No. Do you have nausea? Well, no. Hang on. Fatigue. With that loss of smell, you won't complain about your own breath. Maybe you do have mm. problems with your, with your smell. <laughs> do you reckon I should put a tentative yes in there? So the other no. day I accidentally put in a yes for one of these questions by mistake, and within like a minute I got a phone call from the team doctor going, What's the complaints? What's this? So if you don't submit this test, I'm just submitting it now. If you don't submit this every day, the six days leading into a race, you can't race. So if you just forget that admin one day, out of there. Shit. Hey, um, do they do they ask if you got small man syndrome? Yeah, that was that was that was a supplementary question. <laughs> Boys, I've just got an alert. Breaking news. It came up on Cycling News six minutes ago. Uh, Daryl Impey joins Chris Froome at Israel Startup Nation as Tour de France road captain. Oh, really? Mm. Yeah. Oh, wow. I did. I did hear a whisper, but now it's a few. Yeah, I'd heard whispers, but yeah. So that's it. That's 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 it. That's uh. Is that why I did want to go on the show, Bills? Is he, uh, contra- is he contracted to do stuff with just Froomey now? Yeah, maybe. Um. No, that's yeah. That's a big loss for us. Um. Mm. Look, I, I was chatting with him about it a little bit. Um, I didn't know what, what he was going to do or whatever, but obviously I knew we all knew that he was had decision to make because that was on Cycling News. And, yeah, I'm sure it wasn't a neat well, – I know for sure that it wasn't an easy decision for him to make. Um, that's a real shame. Obviously, uh, he's been a big part of this team. He's been here since the start. He's a leader on and off the bike. Uh, and he's a fucking legend. And, yeah, he, he is one of the best guys I've ever met in cycling. Yeah, and he's right up there. He's right um, up there because he's the guy that you know what you're always going to get out of him. Like he's he's just going to give it a hundred percent, super loyal. And you look back at the history of the Green Edge team. He was, I think, he might have been the last rider picked, or it was one of the last two um, for the original. Well, squad. he went to a shit show with. Um, he went to an absolute shit show with the Pegasus system. You know, yeah. it was with um, who was the guy, Chris. Chris White was that the the guy? Yeah, yeah. And Clinton, yeah. There's a few victims of that. I remember that sort of was the end Swain of Swain Tuff was well. in that. Robbie was in that. Oh, that, was, that was a stuff around, eh? Mm. Yeah, but I remember going. I remember today. first meeting him at the um, training camp, and uh, yeah, he was a legend straight off the bat. And he was most famous for in 2012. Um, remember, he should have won the Tour of Turkey, and he got thrown off his bike by that by asshole. Boss. Hey, oh, boss. Yeah. yeah. Grab these now, that jersey. Was a weird one, Teo Boss was um, uh, like I obviously he's real close with the Dutchies, and so I was I was asking about this because I was like, how 
who throws someone off the bike. And apparently that was like the biggest brain fart he's ever had. Apparently he's a super nice guy. I've never met him, but super nice guy, like gentle giant, all this stuff. And then decides to throw someone off the bike and break their back. Um, that was the, that was the worst. The thing, that was one of the worst things by far I've ever seen in cycling. That is the worst he, thing I've he, ever seen in cycling. He still won Turkey. He finished. Imps. Yeah, because it was last three k. Yeah, but he still crossed the line on his. He peeled across the line. And then he. It'd be, hard, he, it'd be hard to get over something like that, wouldn't it? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> what happened to Taylor hey, Boss he, in that oh. situation? He, he got in trouble. I'm sure he oh, got you, re- <laughs> you reckon? <laughs> oh, did he? Oh, oh so all yeah. Good. He's yeah, only good. grabbed the leader's oh, jersey and binned him. I'm not sure the exact details of the of the consequences, but there's no amount of going to the commissary going, "Hey, mate, that's just a dodgy angle." I, I think he might have, I think I think the worst of it was Robbie Hunter lined him up in the car park afterwards. Maybe. Yeah, that's one guy you don't want to mess with. Yeah. But uh, uh, yeah, no, that, that's a, that's a shame. But I think it also it's a huge opportunity for him if he's going to be the road captain at the Tour de France with the likes of Chris Froome trying to, you know, if he doesn't win it this year, going for five. I mean, yeah. that's a pretty big experience or an opportunity to to take. So you can understand it, and also like, yeah, he's been with the team for what eight years now, nine years. Yeah, and like, man, we're in, yeah. we're in such a crazy year. Like, it goes without saying how crazy this year has been. In, in all facets of life and it's been crazy in the cycling peloton and um you know there's just so much uncertainty and and things like that and as you get older in your career you search for certainty and you search for um you know what you want to do Fury, in the last maybe. parts of your career what yeah but it's, i feel like security with with, with these guys coming <laughs> in you know how much care yeah. like that they've also got like such a a big budget obviously got a massive budget if they're signing premium and you see some of the other guys are signing. So, you know, security for the future. Where, where do they get their money from? It's a stupid question, but is it like Israel tourism or what, what is it? No, nah, it's just a rich dude, man. The guy that yeah. owns the team is just the, he's a billionaire. Sylvan Adams. Sylvan. So why um, are you is, running it is, under, the, under the guise of Israel then? Why, why because I think, I, think, I think there's a – well, he, he's an Israeli. He, 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 oh. He's – you could have joined that. You could have joined that dot, mate. No, but he's Canadian. You know what's weird? He's Canadian. He's Canadian. Canadian. He's Canadian. Oh, is he? But he, yeah. But he, he moved to. He's lived in Israel for X amount of years now, and he. he I think there's also a part owner, uh, Israeli guy, who's a part owner as well of the team. Um, and he's obviously Sylvan Adams. Obviously, has a connection to Israel in one way or another. Is Demo oh, still work with the team? Yeah, he's the DS hmm. for the development team. Yeah, right. Yeah. Well, hopefully yeah. Uh, they can promote him and he can uh, work with him. So that would be a good good duo, those two. Yeah, shit, yeah. Hey, shit, uh, yeah. we've got a pretty big show, boys. We're already about halfway through it. But, um, yeah. geez, there's some breaking news left, right and centre. And it seems like whenever we've labelled people on this legend or bell-in, they, two weeks later, you know, the shit hits a fan. Look at um, Ellen DeGeneres is hot on the press at the moment. They reckon she's going to have to walk away from her show because ever since we labelled her a bell-in, uh, things have just gone from shit house to desolate. <laughs> yeah, mate. What's she, she up to? What's happened? Shit. I haven't followed this. I haven't well, followed this at all. Well, since, since we exposed her, because um, no, no one knew about how she acted other than us three, and mm. we, um, we exposed her, and now everybody's coming out of the woodwork. All the st- staff are coming out saying the way, yeah, that's true. That she treated us like shit. She'd laugh while she was ribbing us and and uh, all this crap. So now she's um she's put out a big apology and she's basically fucked. I think her show. Yeah. So she the kidding. Aussie the Aussie link was um she came out to Australia I think in 2014 and uh, she was meant to co-host the Today Show and at the last minute they said no nah, no nah, she's not going to do that in fact she's going to do an interview she's going to be here at 10:30 richard wilkins is doing the interview you can't look at her don't make eye contact and just rattle off the questions everyone's like hang on you you for real don't make eye contact what the hell is this and that was one of the common accusations from staff that she was just a bit of a nutter and what's bullshit and hypocritical of the whole thing is her whole premise is you know be kind to one another treat people the way you want to be treated and all this sort of stuff Yet she acts and treats people like that. Um, but 
the, the, the conflicting thing is you look at it on paper, she does a lot for charities and, you know, there are a lot of good points, but I don't understand why people like that just can't be decent people, you know, behind the scenes. Like, you don't have to act like yeah. that. Where's, no. your, where's your moral compass? I, I'm pretty sure, mm. Bills, if if this podcast become a absolute global sensation, which the odds of that is, you know, it's equivalent to me getting the quaddy tomorrow, um, <laughs> you know, you wouldn't change or you'd hope no. you wouldn't. And, like, you can understand it. You know, you get these asshole journalists out there, like, I don't know, off the top of my head, maybe in New Zealand, Mike Hosking. George will know who he is. It's just a bit of a flog. But he does a good show for what he what his target is. And um, and people look at him on a show and go, oh, yeah, he's a flog. So you don't expect anything less when he's not on the show. And I think he is relatively a flog off the show he's as well. He's fine with it. I think but he's when, fine with that as well, you know. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's who he is. That's how he, what he does. Ellen DeGeneres, like you say, Jonesy, she's preaching this whole like love everybody, care for everyone, let's have fun, little jovial rah rah. But that's just a, it's just a front, and you can, it doesn't. I'm just fly. looking at a photo of her here. She's running a very sort of elvish vibe with her look. Is that is that just this photo, or does she normally look like something out of Lord of the Rings, like a little like an elvish kind of vibe? No, she, she's def yeah, she's definitely getting more and more um, elvish. Lord of the Rings, yeah, elvish. Um, okay. but, the, but the other thing that shit me is um, when, you, when you're on the ropes, right, and there's enough evidence to go, all right, they've got me here, um, that's a great opportunity to go, listen, I stuffed up, I feel terrible, I'm going to make it up to my staff, they're all getting a car, you know, just give, give them a, a Honda <laughs> Civic or something, you know, just do something. Oh, or just I feel bad during COVID. The start. They, could, they could look at me in the eyes, they could chew gum, they can cook meat out the front, they do whatever they want. Um, but I feel really bad and just fess up and own it. What she did is she went out and blamed her um, executive producers and said, oh, look, there's a problem with management. I should have been across it and just passed the buck. Like, you can't do yeah. that. Like, once you're on the ropes and nah. you're busted, just fess up. It's like a Band-Aid. Rip it off. Take the punches. Take all of it. And it and then it, people can start the process of moving forward. It's like That's 101 of crisis management. It's so we're the we, prime we, minister of New Zealand, like the prime minister of a country, going like fucking up, and then going, "Oh, it was the ministers. It was it was the ministers." Now you're front and centre. You're in, you're the in voice. Fact, in fact, it's like Trump. Did you see the interview yesterday um, yeah. with that Aussie guy? That was and so it, good. Eh? I I could not believe what I was watching. This guy's got Trump on the ropes, and he's talking about the death count. Did you see that bit? Yeah. And he's saying like, you know. Per capita, America's miles in front. And Trump's got the, these A4 bits of paper and he's going, no, 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 no. you got to look at the charts. you got to look <laughs> at the charts. I mean, no, our death. He goes, no, Mr. President, it, in per capita, it is off the charts. He goes, no, 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 you can't look at it like that. He goes, uh, why not? <laughs> <laughs> he was like, oh, oh. We're, Trump was like, so, yeah, you look at this, we're, um, we're ahead of, the world, uh, you're ahead of the world. Uh, no, uh, <laughs> that's not a good thing, right? So, no, you can't look at it like that. You got to look at the positive, the deaths of if someone has a case and then like they, they die or they, they don't die, like we're ahead of the world. But the problem is, we do so much testing, so much <laughs> testing. You know, we're going to find more cases. That's a problem. Slow. So, so I ask my people. Slow the testing down. Oh, <laughs> mate, it was uh, – I couldn't believe it. And and this guy, to his credit, um, Australia is like, you know, how good is it that he's an Aussie? But he at least caught him out on all his bullshit. So when Trump was saying things like, everybody's saying it, everybody's saying we're doing a good job, and he's going, who's saying that? Like, you know, give me, <laughs> yeah. give me examples. And, like, yeah, every time, yeah, donuts. Yeah. No, he's, he's fucking – should I um, – so speaking of Yanks, are we doing Tyson for Legend of Bellend or are we doing human the human race? Actually, on the Legend of Bellend, I reached out to the um, to the listeners and asked for some suggestions. There were some quite good suggestions come through. Um, I reckon we've almost got the next four or five episodes covered um, of Legend of Bellend. Can you can you do multiple? Remember in the early days we did two at once. Or do you want to yeah. save them? Well, I don't know if our research extends past. The no research we did on one topic. Yeah, oh, well, I don't know who we're doing. So I think yeah. should we not touch first on the on the year on a year a, a great year and then wrap it yeah. up with the Balin. Uh, well, and before we go, in terms of like we we're saying, people that have been labelled legend or Balin, 
Uh, Kanye West, um, geez, he's on a bit of a roller coaster at the moment. Apparently, he's not backing down on this presidential campaign. Like, he's gone and hired a um, company, let the voters decide to mass voter signatures in three states, Ohio, West Virginia, and Arkansas. Um, and he could be a cock blocker for Trump because he, mm. you know, he's a Trump fa fan. Mm. This could have massive ramifications for the presidential race in the states. It's going to be, uh, it's going to be unreal if he if he definitely runs and then and has to do. Some well, this was my theory the whole like time that. that Trump had put him up to it that he that he had doing it just to soak up a few votes the people that couldn't bring themselves to vote for Trump, and then you know he he just soaks up the the Democrat votes so that Trump still has the majority and you know it's it's a it's a sneaky ploy but he's. Or well, will it go it. the other way? It'll go the other way. Maybe they'll take. He'll take Trump's votes. The Democrats are. I mean, the the states that vote democratically for the Democrats are going to vote for Biden. The states. Oh, uh, sorry, I said that wrong. I meant the people that couldn't bring read. themselves to vote for. I said that wrong. I meant the people that couldn't vote bring themselves to vote for for um, Biden, but didn't. You know, were like, oh, well, I'd rather not vote for Trump. Well, or at least just vote for Kanye. And then you know, if, if that's if that if people are going, oh, I can't bring myself to vote for Trump or Biden. Ah, oh, fuck oh, it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeezy. Yeah, you're not a stable person. Eh? But no, what I, don't lot, so I feel like it's not a stable country. So what I don't no. understand is who would want that job in 2020? Like, who wants that job in in this current climate? Like, fuck that. The the world yeah. is it's an absolute shit show. Like, I'd be like, no, no, no. I'd, if I was Trump, I'd be like, "Thanks, but uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna raise the bat and I'm off. Like I'm doing one term mm. and that's it. Go back mm. to some sort of normality." I couldn't think of anything worse. Oh no, but he's a tech swinger. Yeah. Like Speaking yeah. of normality, uh, what what year are we throwing back to to reminisce about normal times? Well, this has caused a bit of uh, controversy because I I wanted to throw out 2014, um, 2014. For me, was a, was an absolute belter. Um, you know, this is oh. where I felt that Girona really came on leaps and bounds, and they, and they really felt like there was a community brewing. Um, you know, great success with the team. Uh, you had events like the Giro, and you know, won the team time trial, and then finished with two guys. And um, the tour that year was a lot of fun out in the road with Jules and Hawks. Won the flag. Um, yeah, it's just it was an awesome year. We had, really? great, we had some great movie nights in 2014, eh? That was the start of oh. uh, of the OC. Yeah, we used to we used to every every like Wednesday, I reckon it was. It just felt like we always had free time back then, and then yeah. everything suddenly got busy and we had jobs. But um, yeah, we used to have like ten people over, and you know, someone to nominate a movie, and yeah, I think we watched yeah OC. Oh, we were watching a show for a while. Watch just classics like Titanic. Um, the bodyguard. There was a few relationships. A few relationships yeah. from movie night as well. Yeah, mm. there's a, a few of... relationships that are, uh, resulted in marriage and uh, proposals. Yeah, yeah. A couple yeah. gone the other way. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And more gone the other way. And what's the ratio of like? Is it, nah, nah, one nah one? I think no, nah, it's two two positive results, one negative <laughs> outcome. You've still got antibodies, eh? Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> But yeah, one of them resulted in marriage and two kids at this point. So yeah, bloody great mm. movies. That's what um Leo and Kate Winslet. That was your twenty fourteen. Yeah, I think it was a, a an actual a real shitter for me. One of the worst years ever. And I've actually got a bit of a theory about two thousand fourteen, and this will surprise you a little bit. Mm. But two thousand and fourteen was just a warm up for two thousand and twenty because. I'll tell you why, because, okay, look, look what's happened in 2020. You know, we've had floods, fires, race riots, and a global um, uh, pandemic. On, so I, I just have to cut you off. My brain, I just had a light bulb, right? You know, on um, Top Gear, when they used to do the hottest lap, <laughs> and they yeah. they ranked the laps? I think we do that with the years. So by, you know, in 20 eps, you'll have a ranking of all the years before 2020, um, over the last 30 years. Okay. So, obviously, 20, 2002 is in front of 2014, yeah? And we'll just yep. start building a list from there. Yep. All right. Okay. 
Okay, we'll, okay. we'll run keep, that. Keep I'm going. Gonna, Sorry, I cut, cut you off before yeah. I forgot. So the, the, my yeah. theory for this is it was, a, it was just a warm-up for 2020 because in 2014, we had Ebola. So that was the warm-up for the pandemic. Um, so that point. was six. Yeah, so that was that came around. That was just like, it was like dip your toe in the water. This is a pandemic, a little bit scared. Oh, it's not happening to us. We'll probably be okay. And then you had, um, you had the rise of ISIS. So that wasn't a great thing. Um, you also had the celebrity deaths. You had um, Robin, Robin Williams. Williams. He died in 2014. Yeah. Um, but the, you also had a taste of the, the race conflict um, because you had the, the police killed. Um, do you remember in St. Louis? Um, yeah. There was a, they shot a, un, an unarmed team, Michael Brown, and he was fatal, fatally shot and then by, this, by Darren Wilson. And that basically kicked off a, a mini, well, a, a watered down version. It was one of the precursors to what we've got now, you know. So you had all these elements. I mean, then you had airlines going, planes going missing and, you know, MH, MH713 or MH7. And you had the crime. It was just a, yeah. So you just had this warm up of all these, like, like you know, a, a smaller version of the race of the of of these racial tensions, or, or I guess you know, and then you had sort of a smaller version of, of it was just a warm up, you know, and and then I also one other reason that I looked that it was so shit was I was riding <laughs> I was riding on uh, liquid gas and I didn't understand a single one of my teammates for a whole year and <laughs> that, that doesn't matter. And, no. I, I, I've also got written down in my notes, George. I, I, I've written down in my notes here. Is 2014 the closest we've seen to 2020? And then mm. I had basically what you wrote down, Ebola outbreak, the riots against black violence. Um, and another thing was, you guys will remember a few weeks ago, the Garmin hack. So Garmin, Garmin was hacked. Uh, yeah. the, whole system, the whole system was down. Another big hack in 2014 was Sony Pictures was hacked when they when oh, they yeah. wrote they um were due to release the interview. Remember oh, the movie, that's the right, the James North Franklin. Korean one. Mm. And mm. they they were hacked, and uh, movies were released and uh, ahead of time, like Fury, that Brad Pitt movie, the war movie that was leaked. Oh, the tank. Uh, yeah, a whole lot of leaks from Sony Pictures. So, that, so they were hacked. Um, obviously, last night we had that. Horrific explosion in Lebanon in Beirut. You guys would have seen mm, that. Yeah, shit. Yeah. Scary shit. Um, and there was other explosions in 2014. Do you know um, what I was just looking at Lebanon? I was just looking at um, tourism in Lebanon two days ago because uh, in Beirut because um, I was watching Homeland and and they were talking about Beirut and, and everything. And I was like, I wonder if like you know if it's if you can actually just go there. And I was looking at and actually by you know world travel standards apart from a massive corona outbreak it's um it's it's we've got this conception that it's like a terrible place you can't go there it's so dangerous but it's a pretty safe place to go to by at least lonely planet where it comes. yeah well the civil war ended there in the in the in the 90s no or later but later mid 90s or something but hey what a, I've, I've got a couple of things i'll touch on quickly one positive mm -hmm. one negative what an absolutely fucking shocking year for Malaysian Airlines. So MH370 went missing. When that flight went missing, I was at um, the Tour of Langkawi. And this is pretty bizarre. So the I was at Tour of Langkawi and I was sitting on a beach. The last stage had finished. I was lying on a beach with um, with Peter Weenien, Brett Lancaster, Damien Housen. And we were just, it was midnight, sitting on the beach, just flying home the next day back to Europe. And it was the exact flight path of MH370, and it left Kuala Lumpur at midnight. It flew basically directly over the top of us half an hour later, and then half an hour later it was to never be seen again. And we went to Kuala Lumpur the following evening. We flew out of Kuala Lumpur at midnight back to Europe, and it was fucking freaky, man. Walking around Kuala Lumpur Airport was just this vibe of like, you knew just behind the wall over there was all these families in a room wondering what the hell's going oh, wow. where their loved ones are. It was just eerie, really eerie feeling. And then we climbed aboard a Malaysian Airlines flight and uh, flew back to Barcelona. And and then only a few months later, like at that point, that was the biggest uh, disaster, airline air, disaster, air, airline yeah. disaster in terms of deaths and things like that. 
Uh, and then only a couple of months later, MH17, another Malaysian Airlines flight, was shot down over the Ukraine, remember? Yeah, the Crimean. That was because 14 was when there was the Crimea conflict in the Ukraine, right? Yeah. And there yeah. was a, a friend of a friend's mother from Nelson was on that flight and they just never, their father was on that flight and they just, just a Dutch, whole Dutch family. A lot of Dutchies were on that flight. Um, but it's it's so weird. Like you're saying, it was freaky getting on the plane and, and all that. But like statistically, the chances of, of plane crashes, deaths, it's like sharks. You know, I was at the beach the other day and I went swimming and I just like had this like yeah, lurking feeling under me. You, you were in the Mediterranean, bro. <laughs> you might as well be swimming in a lake. But like the same with the, the same with flights though, you know, like statistically, when you land in Wellington in New Zealand, if anyone's ever landed in Wellington, it's one of the scariest experiences of your life. But like, I don't know of any planes that have crashed landing into Wellington. And like, it's, it's yeah, but like, even even though you know the stats and you know the chances are pretty slim, the slightest bit of turbulence, your brain can't help but go, shit, imagine if this whole thing goes down. And you know, in in Australia, one of the best shows is Air Crash Disaster or whatever it is. Seconds from Disaster. Oh, a real where... bone pick with Emirates is that's one of the options on their in-flight entertainment. Bullshit. It's the National Geographic show, Air Crash Disaster. Who I would swear. watch that in-flight entertainment? <laughs> we were we were having a we were having a chat last night at dinner here in Poland actually about if you're on a plane. Um, we were talking about planes that had been turned around for like, you know, they take off and there's an alert goes off, smoke detector or something, they get turned around. We were talking like, um, do you reckon like, say if you're at 38,000 feet and the plane engines cut, cut off, they obviously can glide those things for a certain period of time. And the captain said, look, we're going to have to try to make an emergency landing. We've got no brakes. We've got nothing. We're coming in hot. Chances are slim. But it's going to be, say, 20 minutes until you, you hit the ground. Do you think you'd come to terms a little bit with the fact that you're about to die, or would you just be going ah! for twenty minutes? <laughs> yeah, Oof. I don't know. It's hard. It's a tough one. I'd rather not it... know. Let's be honest. I'd rather they just didn't tell me, and I go, "Oh, my ears are popping," Ooh. and then go, "Boom, outies." Well, mm. one, a, a bad one I heard of that was um, remember um, John F. Kennedy Jr. when he crashed his little plane. And he was flying, and he, he didn't have enough experience um, to be. He was flying from New York to um, what's that island there? JFK. No, wherever. Stephen Island. <laughs> and and uh, he was going to a wedding, and it got a bit cloudy, and he lost his bearings, and he had his missus and his sister in law, I think. And they said that, like, once he tried to do like a bit of a U bolt, the thing lost control, and they would have been alive, you know, for three, three and a half minutes or whatever it was. But that Tumbling. that that would be the absolute worst when you mm. know your brown bread, like those last couple of minutes. I think you're just going to shock. Yeah. Speaking good, of um, falling good out areas. of the sky, I like it. I like how I was like, yeah, 2014. Yeah, yeah it's awesome. And it uh, ended up morphing into this whole last three minutes of your life. <laughs> um, speaking of speaking of 2014 and falling out of the sky. Do you remember in 2014 that guy jumped out of that, jumped from the atmosphere? Yeah, the um, Red Bull guy. The Red Bull dude. So that was mm -hmm. in 2014. So he he has the world record for the, obviously the longest free fall. <laughs> um, what did he do? Take a rocket up, essentially, jump off a rocket. Oh, he just went to some plane that basically went to the top of the atmosphere, to the edge of the atmosphere, and he jumped, like he parachuted or whatever <laughs> out of there. He, didn't, he free falled for 41 no, he free falled for 30. Free fell. Free fell. Free fall. He, he jumped. He was in the air for. <laughs> he was in the air for 41 kilometers, but he free fell for 37 kilometers. Holy shit. Imagine that. That's a long Just, way down, eh? It was like, it was, uh, fuck, these are long notes. Um, you make notes. <laughs> I just copied <laughs> off Wikipedia, but I didn't dilute it. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, something at four minutes. His descent to Earth lasted four minutes. Fuck, that's unbelievable. Peak speed. Four minutes. Peak speed exceeding 1,300 kilometers an hour. That's that's you, going. You know when you put your head out the window at 100k an hour? Like, <laughs> <laughs> imagine doing 1,300. Jeez. Are you, you at a... um? 
you had a pretty nasty crash that year in 2014, talking about great memories, uh, Paribu Bay Bills. Yeah, had a really gnarly one. That was another shocker. 2014 was shit for me for injuries. Actually, I had a lot of injuries. I started 2014. I crashed in January at a, at a club race in Rotorua and uh, basically ripped the whole palm of my hand off. So I was off the bike for a few weeks there. I broke my elbow at the same time. And then I finally got back on the bike uh start of February. Hang on, hang through. on, boys. I've got a nibble. I've got a nibble. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's Jake Juan. What are you guys up to? Hey, bro. Joachim Schoenacker, uh, one of the, the number one swaneurs in, in world cycling. Um, I just threw the bait out and he nibbled. How are you, bro? Good, and you? Yeah, here in Poland. Yeah, good. We're just reliving uh, 2014 and, and saying how great a year it was, but uh, Bewley disagrees. He had a nasty crash at Roubaix. How was your 2014, mate? Uh, 2014. Uh, you worked with us in 2014, Team New Zealand, didn't you? Ponferrada. No, no, no. I was not there in Ponferrada. No. Uh, <laughs> I thought it was relaxing. I thought but, it was a good world. <laughs> <laughs> Joachim was there. Joachim was there for me in Roubaix that day when I crashed. Remember yeah. that they took the car, took me out before Arenberg. I fucked my face up and broke my hand. Was that not my director that did that? Yeah, yeah, yeah I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that the year that we went uh, to the free shop to buy uh, a Playboy? Yeah. <laughs> no, that was 2013. <laughs> that was a great story. Tell that story. <laughs> hey, hey, Joachim, tell that story, mate. That is a belter. So uh, Sam sent me a message. I think he broke his collarbone in Circuit de Sart, if I'm correct. Yeah. And um, I had to go pick him up at the train station and uh, be driving to the hospital in Belgium. And Sam didn't have dinner yet, so we stopped in the fridge shop. And there's a sausage called in Belgium, and it's called a Playboy. So Sam wanted to have a Playboy, I'd like the sausage. Okay, we pay with uh, the team cards. And uh, when I send in my my uh, receipt, I received a message from the office that I was not allowed to buy pornographic magazines <laughs> with, the, with the team card. So uh, I had to explain that it was actually That's a awesome. It was pretty funny. And then, and, then, and then the team contacted. Oh no! Then Joachim contacted me and said, "Oh, can you can you message email the team and tell them that it was." You know, tell them the, the truth. And I was like, nah, fuck that. You're on your own. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So how are you going, Joachim? As the, uh, as, as the new COVID protocols, how does that affect your job, mate? Um, it, apart from wearing the mask, it uh, it doesn't change a lot because we, we used to have, like, a lot of uh, hygiene anyway, like washing our hands and sanitizing. Um, the only difference is like uh, wearing masks everywhere. Like I just took it off now for uh, for the camera, but other than that, it's it's pretty normal. And also, yeah, it's not not the same anymore. Like there's no no place in the bar for us anymore. <laughs> oh, that's shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Joachim gave me a massage yesterday, and we both had masks on, chewing the fat through masks. Yeah. And and how ha- and how is it in Belgium outside of the racing, mate? Can, are they open up the bars yet? Can you go have a doodle? Uh, yeah, everything is open where I live till uh, till one o'clock at night. And um, where I live, we we have to wear a mask even in the restaurants or bars. But when we sit down, we can take it off. But if we need to go to the toilet, we have to put it back on again. Yeah. But what's with the Dutchies over the corner? Because just across the border, like hundred k across, no one's wearing a mask up there. So when all the when all my teammates came down to Borgos. They couldn't believe that we were walking around. You know, you know the general public. Everybody yeah. was wearing a mask. Yeah, like I live, I live six k from the border, and in my town we have to wear masks in every shop and every restaurant. And then you cross the border, and there's nobody with a mask there. So if you go into shopping centers or whatever, the only people with wearing masks are Belgian people. So it's it's pretty pretty bizarre. Good on the Belgians, eh? Yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, Joachim, you're, you're a man who knows all the ins and outs of uh, what's going on in the world of cycling. Uh, you're king of the rumour file. You got any good gossip uh, at the moment? Any uh, big moves that are happening? We just broke the news before. Daryl Limpy's going to the Israeli team with Froomey. Um, do you know any other big moves that might be happening, Jaquan? 
for the moment it's my first race back so i have to throw out the fishing lines again to get some more news <laughs> if, if, you come, if you come back next week maybe i can tell you more but for the moment i have nothing uh, uh, let's start some rogue rumors about <laughs> sam buley i heard he's um he's moving to cofidus was the latest i've heard so yeah we'll get that one doing the rounds teaming up with haas haas buley yeah. one two punch You're in, yeah re reuniting mm. so yeah. For well, the rest, there's I, not many rumors at the moment. Uh, I hear that Dan Jones is coming back in cycling next year, but no, no, no. <laughs> I'm going to set up a Playboy van. Yeah, I'll sell perfect. Playboys on the side of the road at uh, Belgium. The I'll magazine. Be <laughs> <laughs> hey, before you go, before, every magazine. Before you go, Joachim, you got any jokes? You're always good for a joke. I oh, mean, come on! I've, I've hooked you. I've put you into the boat. I've, I left. I left all my bottles standing there to to join the show, so I'm not prepared. All right. Well, leave <laughs> leave the listeners. Leave the listeners with, a, with some advice on how to get through COVID, mate. How do, how do you uh, maintain a, a positive attitude? Um, wash your hands, wear a mask, and enjoy your family. That's the most important. Yeah, yeah. That's that's the only thing that gets you through it. I hear you guys in lockdown again in Melbourne at the moment, no? Yeah, I'm in uh, Geelong. We're stage three, but Melbourne's stage four. Yeah. And uh, they reckon if it goes to stage five, it could be you're allowed out one hour a week and you can yeah. go to the supermarket and that's about it. Did, so, didn't uh, they make already uh, posters of me in there, Geelong? Because uh, I was, yeah, mate. was walking down the street there, people were yelling at me, hey, pussy boy. So <laughs> they made already <the> posters. <laughs> that's because I gave you the bloody Geelong members hat. <laughs> Uh, yeah. It's good, good, good to hear you well, Joachim. Thanks yeah. for coming on the show, buddy. Okay, keep in touch, right, boys. Dan, a... You have a great day tomorrow, eh, Dan. We'll do, mate. You too. Okay. See, See you in half an hour. So, bye, bye. There you hey, go. Well, I'm, gonna to... To... I'm gonna have to wrap we... up soon because I've got to get in the car and drive to um, <laughs> drive to a bike race. I'm gonna right. go to an actual start line in about half an hour. But, okay, um, before we go, legend or Belling, boys, Mike Tyson. Yeah. Well, okay. I think that um, Mike Tyson is an absolute fucking bell end because there's nothing in his life that he's really done that makes you think he's a legend other than a ferocious left hook. Look, he, he's doing some good things now. He's obviously reformed a little bit. He's set up some um, some charities and some some foundations to help young street kids, which is awesome. But you can't overlook the fact that he has done some terrible, terrible things. They said he was one of the world's baddest men. Um, he was an absolute legend in the ring. Like uh, reading through like the fights, and he was one of the one of the very few to be a heavyweight champion. Defended that championship uh, eight times. Then he went to jail for rape, um, and then when he came, he actually came back to the top and was heavyweight champion again. So that, he's one of the few to actually do that. Uh, he also bit Evander Holyfield's ear off in the process. Um, I was just thinking, and, during COVID, you need that ear with the face mask. Yeah, yeah you, you do. You need to get a bit of traction. What's interesting about the ear bite for me was that it was so premeditated that he started the second round. He took his mouth guard out, and because he, he was like, "Right, I'm going to just fucking bite this guy's ear off." Like he's mm. he had me on the ropes. Went out there, took his ear, took his mouth guard out, so he could bite his ear off. So it was uh, pretty you know, premeditated. Well, it was because do you know what he said it was? It was a ret retaliation because he fought event. He lost to Evander Holyfield. He lost the title to Evander Holyfield um, about six years prior, and the fight was stopped uh, for and Holyfield won from TKO. And Holyfield uh, Tyson's camp accused Holyfield of intentionally headbutting him throughout the whole fight. So six years later. <laughs> Tyson thought he's going to get his revenge, and he he said, "Yeah, but his ear, I bit both his ears," uh, and it was a retaliation to the to the headbutts that he got six years prior. But they've they've mm. made amends those two. They've actually made amends those two. I think they yeah. they do a few things together now. There's a really so, good thirty for thirty on that whole Chase and um, Tyson, like a mm. the battle with him in a Holyfield. Um, if you haven't seen it, do yourself a favor. Yeah. Um, but but You've the gone one bell that, end. Because um, we was just to well, move it along, sorry, because I've got to get in the car. So you've gone bell end, absolute bell end. Um, I'm going to go legend just because I don't have the balls to call a 150-kilo mm. man a bell end. Um, and secondly, because everyone deserves a second chance, I love the fact that he got on the LSD. 
changed his or the psilocybin on the the psychedelics and went holy shit i was a bad man and no doubt about it he was one of the worst but um second chance and he seems like a legend now so i'm gonna go legend i've got a i've got a great quote from tyson that um might change your mind actually george so he says this is he says this quote not long ago i was a vegan for four years but not anymore i eat chicken every now and then i should be a vegan but no red meat at all no way i would be very sick if i ate red meat that's probably why i was so crazy before so he's blaming it on the red meat <laughs> oh it's exactly what we're saying alan before like if you if you mess up fess up hmm. um yeah now i'm gonna have to go uh Belland. I think uh, you can't condone really? that sort of scallyway behavior. Yeah, you don't, you don't think that there's that there's scope for him to reform, to 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 do some psychedelics, to then look back and go, "Holy shit, what was that man? What what was I thinking? What how was I so angry?" But he he crossed you know, too many lines. He did too much damage for fifty years, man. Like terrible. Yeah, damage. yeah, pretty nasty shit. Like it, it sounds like those yeah those early early days. Like he was a real piece of work. Um, oh but, yeah, no doubt about it. But um, he did provide a lot of entertainment. Some of those interviews he did um, with some of the news anchors, there's a f- classic oh, yeah. one on YouTube where he's going, hey, Mike, do you have to swear like that? And he goes, hey, fuck off. You don't like it? Change your fucking yeah. station. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right, so. have a list? Do you still have a list? Do you still run the list? Want a bully, yeah. though? Yeah. I think, I don't... My favorite interview with Mike Tyson was when he's like, I broke my back. They're like, yeah, what do you broken. mean you broke your back? It's, <laughs> it's broken. I broke my back. Oh, what sort of break? Uh, spinal. <laughs> Actually, I, I changed my vote. He's a legend. He gave, he yeah, gave heaps of entertainment. No, he's, he's a legend. I don't know what around. he did, but all right, he's a legend. All right. Okay, I'm going to go, boys. All right, go good show, boys. Up. Yeah, so, so, bloody jam. Um, Jam packed show that one, everyone. Um, hey, if you can do us a favor, subscribe, uh, tell your mates about the show, leave a review on iTunes. Um, uh, because Bills, you want to get in the top 25 on the New Zealand charts. Is that the goal? And also, who, whoever leaves the best comment and promotes and can prove that they've promoted us the best to their friends via social media, we will get you on the show and say good day for a couple of oh, minutes God, one really? day. Yeah. yeah. Okay. What a thrill. Dude, what sounds a thrill. like a loose segment, but okay. <laughs> Get amongst it. Share the, share the show. All right. Good yeah, luck, okay. boys. Good luck today, mate. Start a trouble with Jonesy. Good luck in um, Confimento. My and, name's and, uh, Johnny Utah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Show. By the way, quick wrap up. Anyone uh, anyone recognize this? <laughs> the Girona Crawl. This show was brought to you by the annual Girona Pub Crawl, held every October, this year postponed to November. Um, so happy birthday to, for tomorrow, Jonesy. Thanks, mate. How's your birthday? How old are yeah. you? Oh, uh, 30s. 30s. Still in my, still in my 30s, 39. Mid 30s. Love that. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> We're all in our 30s. Yeah. That's yeah. it. Oh, shit. All right. All right, and boys. There we are doing a podcast. That was a jam packed right. show, that one. Jesus. Hey, George, just a quick reminder. Um, I'm two. Jones is one. You're zero on the fishing. You need to try some better bait, mate. Oh, yeah. mate, my guys suck. I got. I haven't even. I haven't even been. The first week I got a single tick, and then the this week I just got blue ticked. So they read it. And just went, <laughs> Who'd you send it to? <laughs> Who'd you send it to? A rugby player. Oh, nice. So we'll see how it goes next week. I might try for right. some cyclists next week. Mike dropped. All right. Good job. So.